Hey guys, in today's video, we're taking a look at the ProRes RAW codec and all the advantages and disadvantages it brings along with it for videographers. ProRes RAW is a new high efficiency video codec made by Apple, which aims to merge the performance of ProRes with the flexibility of RAW video. Let's begin with the ProRes part. This is a lossy codec that was originally introduced by Apple in 2007. It was designed to be an intermediate codec, meaning that it is intended to be used during post-production, but not for distribution. Now, even though it's a lossy format, it retains an incredible amount of detail at lower bit rates than uncompressed footage. And because it is designed to be an intermediate codec with mild compression, it is actually very easy on your computer hardware in post-production. So you do not need some sort of liquid cooled nuclear grade PC to edit. Now ProRes alone is an entirely whole discussion in itself. So let's leave it at that for now. To sum up, ProRes is a video codec designed by Apple to essentially streamline the post-production process. Now let's talk about RAW. We've spoken about RAW before in still imagery and what it means. And here it is pretty much the exact same thing. Conventionally, when a camera records a video, that video is processed and compressed into a video codec that is then delivered to a file that you can access. The problem is that with most codecs, a lot of the data from the sensor is lost. So similar to JPEGs and still imagery, the video files are compressed and processed into a more manageable file size. But in doing so, a hell of a lot of data from the camera sensor is also lost. Raw video fixes this issue by retaining all of the data from the camera sensor and saving it into a usable video format. A whole lot of data is retained, video properties like white balance, ISO, shadow detail, highlight detail, and so on can be easily altered in post, which would otherwise be lost in a conventional lossy format because those properties are baked in, so they cannot be changed afterwards. The issue lies in the practicality and manageability of RAW. File sizes are huge, and the whole workflow for RAW footage is really just cumbersome and not very efficient for the most part. Enter ProRes RAW the codec that merges the performance of ProRes with the flexibility of RAW. Now, contrary to popular belief, ProRes RAW is actually a compressed format. However, it strikes the perfect balance between performance and great image quality, ultimately leading to a more manageable file size too. And if we're being completely honest, no one will actually be able to tell the difference in quality between ProRes RAW and a conventional uncompressed RAW format anyway. The advantage of ProRes RAW, besides a more manageable file size, is that it is stored in a conventional MOV container. So a single video is a single file. Unlike Cinema DNG RAW, which saves the video as individual frames. So if your footage was 10 minutes long at 24 frames per second, you have 14,400 single images to process. The workflow is unbelievably cumbersome and impractical. Final Cut Pro does not even have a true and native support framework for Cinema DNG. It's just a complete pain. Now, of course, there are other RAW formats like Red Code and Canon Cinema RAW Lite that use different proprietary codecs. But the general turnout here is that ProRes RAW is a lot more manageable and practical than all of them. The disadvantage of this is that it's very difficult to identify whether you have a ProRes RAW video or just a conventional video since ProRes RAW comes in a similar MOV container. And as of right now, Final Cut does not give you any sort of indication. You simply just have to know which footage is ProRes RAW and which isn't because you will not be shown. One other advantage of ProRes RAW is that it is a smart codec. What I mean by this is that the codec actually utilizes variable bit rates. If you're recording a video of an overexposed scene, then the codec will identify that besides capturing what's on the screen, it actually has to record a lot more detail in the highlight areas because that is where a lot of data is lost. And of course, it won't have to do the same with the shadows because if you're overexposing, then your shadow detail is already captured. The same can be said for underexposing. The only difference is that the detail being captured is in the shadows. The codec is very smart in figuring out where to collect and record data and where not to, which in turn ultimately allows for a smaller file size. So ProRes RAW is here, and I personally believe it is really going to shake up the film industry. Unfortunately, as of right now, only one camera is licensed to directly record in the format, and I believe there are only two external recorders from Atomos. Final Cut Pro is also the only NLE that officially supports ProRes RAW as of right now, but my guess is that we'll probably be seeing Adobe and perhaps DaVinci Resolve adopting the format very soon. In the film industry, standards and practices stay stagnant for a very long time. That's just the nature of the beast. So every once in a while when new cameras, recording formats, or even just new ways of thinking are introduced, it always takes some time for everyone to fully adopt. 
Make sure to check out Apple's official white paper on ProRes RAW for more information about this new codec. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video has been useful to you. Please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as turn on notifications for more videos like this. Catch you folks in the next one. Sure.